How's it going today guys? This is Dan with uh, the Rapway Homestead and today we're going to go over how to install or replace a radio in your boat. So I'm sitting in a, uh, a beautiful newer Skeeter um, boat but the radio in it um, is a little old and it's just had enough of lake life I guess. Um, the volume randomly does any old thing it wants to do. It turns off randomly. Um, also randomly turn on and have wide open volume. So Obviously the customer is kind of over that. There's no way to fix it, at least not realistically. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and replace this with a newer head unit. Um, nothing fancy, customer doesn't need anything too crazy, but the one we're gonna install does have um, wireless Bluetooth capability, so that'll be really nice. Um, if he decides to use that, he said he just needs FM, but um, as you guys all know, you can't just get just an FM radio anymore. They all have a bunch of fancy stuff, so. Um, yeah, this is a pretty simple process. Definitely something you can handle doing at home. Um, I'm in a Skeeter today, like I said, but it'll be the same throughout any, any boat, really. There'll be some small differences in wiring, um, which I'll kind of talk about as they come up. But for the most part, it should all be the same type of, of thing. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so we are up underneath the console here. Uh, here's the back side of our radio. I apologize, it's a little hard to film under here. There's not a lot of room. But the first thing I like to do is go ahead and disconnect all of our, our wiring from it. So as you can see here, we've got the main plug that'll come into the back of the radio. So this is the main plug. It runs up to the wiring of the whole boat. Now we'll worry about wiring the new radio later, but we're just going to go ahead and unplug this. Um, we've got our antenna. So this is what will run up to the antenna outside of the boat. We'll unplug that. Very simply, that just pulls apart like that. Um, here's some things that weren't used. Looks like maybe we got a zip tie we'll have to cut. And then there is a, a strap or a support that goes to the back of the radio here that comes up to the, the actual main part of the boat to help support this radio so it's not bouncing all over the place. So let's go ahead and we'll get all that stuff disconnected and I'll show you what it looks like when that's done. All right, so I got it all disconnected. Unfortunately, I had to put the camera down to do it. Um, you can see everything has been disconnected. We've got that wire strap taken off the back here where it was on this stud. And here's our, our wire harness. So you can see this is where the radio harness ties into the wiring. But we'll go ahead and take care of that in just a minute. So now we're ready to actually pull the old radio out and get the new radio slid in. All right, now this part of the process is very simple. And what we're going to do is go ahead and remove this entire outside housing here. Um, this is kind of a waterproof deal or water resistant, I should say. It's got a little door that shuts to keep the elements off. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and the first thing we have to do is pop these two black caps off. So we're gonna go ahead and try to be very careful. The tabs are on the ends and we don't wanna break this because we do intend to reuse it. So we just have to be real careful. These should come off fairly easy, but you know, things get brittle, so. Just go real slow and kind of work them off like that. And there we go, there's one. You can see them tabs better now. There's just a tab on each side and they pop out. And we'll go ahead and do the same on the other side. Again, being careful not to mar anything up. I just use a flat blade screwdriver and just take your time. So there we go. There's those guys are off and now we'll just take and remove, there's two screws here and there's two on the other side you can't quite see. And this whole thing will come out with the radio. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Okay, and now with a little bit of wiggling, this radio should just come right out. There we go. No problem. So here now we're able to remove the entire radio as an assembly. All right, now the radio we're gonna be installing, again, this is not a super high-end radio. This will be great for this customer. So this is just a Boss um, audio system, but it is the Marine rated. Now the big thing with that is this radio is designed to handle a little bit more um, bouncing and jarring around like you get in a boat when you're going across waves. It also has more of a water resistant screen to it, or a faceplate I should say, than you would find in 
a normal automotive radio. You can stall an automotive radio, but they're, they just don't do well with moisture. So we'll go ahead and get this guy unboxed and start swapping it out. So before we open that up, let's go ahead and get this out of the case. Now, on each side, let me grab my screwdriver again here. All right, so you'll see on each side, there's these small locking tabs right here, and they just kind of pry out in a way. So we'll go ahead and, and do that. So they just kind of come, and we'll want this, the front open, I guess. And these, like that, so we can, because the radio will slide out this direction. So you just kind of want to pry back on that. And we won't be reusing this, but you still, you know, don't want to wreck things. So we'll slide that out a little bit like that. I find if you kind of set the back of the radio down, you want to kind of apply a little bit of pressure as you do it. So it slides out and you'll see the whole thing come out just like this. And we will go ahead and pull that radio out. Again, carefully not to wreck things. You'll notice like our wires are kind of hanging up here. So you just kind of got to wiggle it out, take your time. Again, we want to be careful not to break this outside plastic because we will be reusing that. So set that off to the side. Now, this is held into here by these little locking tabs. So all you got to do is bend them out, back down, and you'll be able to remove the old housing here. They're not too tough to bend. Once you get them started, you can just do it with your finger. Now, if you're installing the same brand radio that you're removing or the same radio, you don't have to do this step. The new one will slide right in and clip in properly, but we're not. We're removing an older Jensen and installing a Boss, so they're not the same uh, mounting clips on the side. So we got to go ahead and remove this. And then it just kind of wiggles out once you get those tabs bent back down. There we go. So there's the housing for the old radio. We'll go ahead and put over here. All right, switched up the camera angle a little bit, so the lighting's a bit better. So we'll go ahead and get this new radio opened up. We'll see what it came with. Again, normally I wouldn't be working right on the back of the boat, but this is all very clean, clean stuff, and it's just kind of what works out to make this video, so we're gonna be nice and careful. Get a little bag here to put your head unit in, the, the faceplate, I should say. Um, here's our wiring harness, and we'll go ahead and remove the radio here. So this one's a lot smaller than the old one, so we'll have to probably do some manipulation with that support bracket. So here's our new... Our new radio, um, the nice thing about this too is it's a lot lighter, so there's not as much jarring force bouncing around. And then in here is our new wiring harness that plugs into this new style radio. So these guys will be installing here in just a little bit. But for now, we'll go ahead and remove this faceplate and we'll get it installed into our housing. So this will slide off just the same. Just kind of pop these little tabs on the side once again. And now obviously being very careful because this is new and paying attention to the orientation to make sure we install it the, the correct way into this. They should be universal, but just in case, you don't want that surprise after you could go through the work. So we'll go ahead and slide that off, set this guy off to the side. And we will go ahead and install it back into here. Now these sizes are typically universal. Now there's some that are gonna be a little bit different. If you buy, for instance, like a Fusion, they are a different style and shape. You're gonna have to cut a new bezel, come up with a new installation system. Um, but in this instance, this is all you need to do. So now we'll go ahead and just bend the appropriate tabs back up. So you can see there's gonna be a space here, but there's some on the sides that'll lock this in nice. Um, I bend up as many tabs as I can that I think will, will be beneficial to locking it in. So we'll go ahead and bend all these, all these up just like this. As you can see, that one isn't going to do much. The ones that are going to do the most are going to be these side ones. And that's just for different thicknesses of, of housing here. So we'll go ahead and bend these guys in. 
Um, this is an important part. You don't want your radio to be, you know, real sloppy in there or anything. I'll go ahead and do this the other side. Again, just pressing them tight as you can. Um, getting as many as you can. Now, unfortunately, this one's fairly... It looks like these end ones are the only ones that are really going to do us a whole lot of good, which is kind of a bummer. I'm going to see if these ones are long enough to bend over and touch or not. I don't think they're going to be, but we're going to find out. Oh, they are. Just barely. So you can see there, this one also bent up and is touching that. So we'll go ahead and do that. There's four of them, and that'll allow that to make good contact. This case is a lot thinner and a lot easier to bend than the old one. Um, but imagine that. This one's new, so it's not going to be as nice. Because, well, that's the way of the world, isn't it? So everything's made thinner and cheaper. But that radio didn't last either. So, you know, it is what it is, right? All right. So there, we've got all them bent. This, the, the bracket or whatever, the outside housing is firmly in place. And all we got to do is go ahead and slide our radio back into here. Again, making sure that it's, you know, facing the right direction. The up is up, I should say. Not that you put it in upside down. Slide it in and then making sure these little tabs on the sides clip in. And it did. So it's, that part is done, which is awesome. The next step, we'll go back up front and we'll get everything all wired in. All right, guys. So the next thing here is something that a lot of people find to be very intimidating, which is the wiring part. It's be looked at as kind of a rat's nest, but it's really not that hard. So the first thing you want to do, and I forgot to mention it before, but before you're doing anything electrical, you want to go ahead and disconnect the battery and make sure there's no power running here, even before you unplug it. You don't want to run the risk of shorting anything out or anything like that. Um, so that's, that is an important step and I did kind of forget that a little bit. Um, so you definitely want to do that. So after you go ahead and you have your battery all disconnected and everything, the first part that I like to do is we're going to go ahead and do the power source and we'll do our speakers last. So what you're going to need to do is obviously disconnect the old harness from the boat harness, if you will. So the power from the boat that comes up to here. So here's our, our power coming in, our positive. Go ahead and cut that guy and go ahead. Now this wire here in this application is not used. This is for a different accessory or remote. So we'll go ahead and just not use that. Um, and then here's our, our ground wire, our black in 12 volt. Red is positive and black is negative. This isn't household wiring, this is 12 volt. So that's, that's the deal there. So we'll go ahead and, and strip these wires back. So we'll start with our, our ground or our negative want to just strip a little bit of wiring back and then what I like to do is give them a little bit of a, a twist and then I like to use these and they are a butt splice connector but these are a heat shrink so when we get all done we'll shrink all these down and what they do is they make a watertight seal there's actually a glue in here as well that'll come out and they make a watertight seal that won't end up corroding your wire harness so we'll go ahead and put that on here Crimp it down real nice. You don't want to go too much to cut through the insulator, but then just give it a little pull and make sure. If you can pull it off, you didn't do a good job. Then we'll go ahead and do this one. Do our, our positive. Making sure we clean all the little ends up when we're done. You don't need to do much. You don't want to do so much that it's, you know, like this, where you've got, there's a bare wire sticking out when you're done. You want to make sure it goes all the way on to the, the the insulator so it's fully covered and sealed when you're done again giving her a little crimp giving it a pull making sure you can't pull that off all right so then we'll grab our new harness now in this case this one came with two separate harnesses we've got a power harness that'll probably plug into our radio and it came with a a speaker harness so we don't need the speaker harness right now we're just working with our power harness now You'll notice that we've got more wires here than we just disconnected. We've got a red, a black, a yellow, and then a blue. So blue is for a remote of some kind. So you can either run this to a um, power antenna, or if you were running a um, an amplifier in this boat, 
you would run this remote wire over to the amp and this is what would tell your amplifier to turn on that your radio is on but we don't have any of that in this boat and then you've got these three so these three are the ones we're going to be worrying about today so our black is still going to be our ground so we'll go ahead and hook that back up to black but we've got a red and a yellow now these two wires we're actually going to go ahead and hook together now the reason for this is is one of these wires is needs constant power and the other wire is for to to tell the radio when to turn on so basically the small red one is the one that'll keep the memory of your radio it'll allow it to maintain radio stations maintain your clock and all that and your yellow is the one that actually supplies the power to the radio that powers everything up when you say you turn your key on on the boat or you turn your power switch on now the problem with wiring it up separately in a boat is that you will constantly have an amp draw on your battery because it's always using power to keep that memory so what this customer opted for and again you can do it that way but what this customer opted for is we're going to put these together and run it to this power wire to the red because this red is ran off a radio switch or a master power switch at his dash so when we put these both in yes he will not maintain um radio stations or his clock won't maintain but he also won't have an amp draw on his main battery when the boat isn't in use so that's the way we're going to go ahead and and do this all right so go ahead and we'll strip the wires off of here or the coating off these wires here you have to go a little farther back because we're going to be twisting them together and then i like to kind of inlay them into each other so that way when you twist them they twist all together like that so you get a good even connection and then we'll put this guy into here doing the same process making sure everything's tucked in there nice that fit no problem so crimp it down again installing it into our red wire that is fused and giving a little pull making sure nothing comes out so there we go there and we'll go ahead and hook up our black or our ground wire to the boat harness Twisting it together once again. Crimping it down. And giving it a little tug. Now that them two are done, we'll go ahead and shrink them down. I just use this little torch here. Kind of on low heat. You want to be careful not to burn your wire. It's really easy to do. But you just want to go real light and easy and they'll shrink down real nice this is why you want to use the smallest um butt connector or shrink down connector possible because it'll shrink down the best and make a nice tight seal on your wire <coughs> excuse me now a lot of guys will say to use solder you got to use solder well a solder is for one thing you still need to run a heat shrink over it uh, electrical tape is not as waterproof as a good heat shrink like this and two now you're running a hot soldering gun in your boat it takes a lot longer you're trying to hold wires together you're risking dripping solder on everything it's just not not a professional way to do it it's not the way a professional mechanic is gonna is gonna do it also a solder if you overheat the wire you actually can put resistance into that wire you damage the wire so it's it's not as it's not preferred it's not my preferred way of doing it guys can argue back and forth all day long but i've installed hundreds and hundreds of electronics and this is the way i like to do it so there you can see our our wires are nice and heat shrunk in the glue has come out the end so our power supply is done so we can go ahead and put that back here that part is done now the next part is going to be our speaker wires and this is the part that you definitely want to take some time in doing so let me kind of zoom in here a little bit now you can see that our speaker wires are labeled on the old harness so for instance here's front negative front positive and then for the right and the same thing for the left this 
um, Bode only has two speakers, so we only have to worry about doing two of them, but we want to make sure we get that correct when we install the new one. Now, sometimes, and in more expensive ones, I guess, these wires will come labeled. Now, obviously, your purples go with the purples, grays go with the grays, and so on and so forth, but we don't know what goes where or where goes what. So we're going to have to grab the manual and look and see what wires, colors we want to connect into our speaker wires. So let me grab the manual and we'll get back with you. All right, so kind of giving you a look, the ones that we're going to want to worry about is our front. So they're on top. And it looks like white is positive for front left and white black is negative for front left. So we're gonna go ahead and, and hook them up first. All right, so I don't have the best memory, so I've got it sitting on the floor right below here. So we're gonna go with our front left speaker. That's the one we were just talking about. And just so happenstance, it is the same wire colors here. So just re-verifying our white, our white solid is our positive. So that is the same here. So we're going to go ahead and just do one at a time to make sure we don't get confused. If you do get confused or it's not labeled, you can go back to the speaker with an ohmmeter and figure out which is negative and which is positive, but this just makes life way easier. So we're going to go ahead and cut this one first, and we will put our white positive wire right here. on our, again, our new harness. So I'll grab another connector. Grab our, our harness, our new wire harness for our radio. We'll just go ahead and strip all these off. We know we're gonna need this one, this one, and then I think, yeah, our grays are going to be our other speaker we're going to want, or our other output, I should say. So we'll just go ahead and separate our grays out from the rest. Let's kind of get them out of the way. And we'll strip our grays quick. Like I said, a lot of radios will come with the um, appropriate labeling on the wire, but this one didn't for whatever reason, so... These speaker wires are really fine too, so you want to make sure you be careful when you strip them. Otherwise, you can kind of you can just cut the wire instead of stripping it off. Um, so I'll go ahead and twist these on here. All right, so we want to find our white, just pure white. So you can see this is our white with a black tracer, they call it, and this is our pure white. So this is the one we're going to go ahead and install into here. Oh, I did not crimp that, did I? That's not going to stay on very good when you don't crimp it. Not even once. There we go. There we pull. All right, now we'll grab our white wire install that. I might have stripped these off a little too long, but they'll be all right. There's plenty of room in here. These speaker wires are so fine. Like I said, they, it's amazing they can even get away with it, but this is only a 200 watt max output radio. So again, we're not trying to, uh, you know, be a total rock concert out there. So we'll go and cut this one. We know this is our negative. So our white with the black tracer will go into here. connector and then grabbing our white with black like okay, I'll go into there now when you do kind of pull on these to test on these speaker wires don't you don't need to get crazy they're again very fine wire you could just break the wire but that's on there good now we'll do our grays so this says that our gray without the tracer so just pure gray wire is going to be our positive and so we're going to grab this guy here that is our positive now it just so happens these wires are um 
are actually matching up with this new wire harness, but that does not happen ever. <laughs> so very rarely do those speaker wire colors match. So definitely don't just go off of that. Again, you can just cut this off, but then it's just gonna take you longer to figure out where all these go. So a little bit of a, a time-saving trick there, I guess you'd say. Sometimes you have to though, or you're installing a new setup and you don't have a choice. So there's that. Now, last but not least, this is our last wire. And it is our negative, so white with a black, or sorry, gray with black tracer. I'll go ahead and put that on here. Making sure it's good on there. And then the only last step to do is go ahead and, and shrink all these down. And I like to back this off to just the least amount of heat because you don't want to get too crazy. And then obviously watching we don't burn anything else. Try not to burn the wires. This part takes a little time, but you just gotta not rush. And this also, of course, helps once it's glued, it also helps with wire retention. So making sure if this does get yanked on that it's not gonna pull wires out. Um, it's not obviously its intended purpose, but it does help with that. So it's kind of just a, a bonus, I guess. Got to be real careful of this dash to not get our flame close to that. We don't want to be melting the customer's dash. It's rather lucky that there's enough factory wire harness in this boat to reach out the front of the radio hole here. Normally, there's not. And you get to do all this upside down, standing on your head underneath the dash. So, kind of lucky. I'm pretty used to doing it that way. So, this is... Nice, especially because I wanted to make a video doing this for you guys, and if it was like that, I'd be it'd be a little tougher to do. So, pretty lucky. Kind of shrink these at the same time here. Again, nice waterproof connections, so these wires over time aren't going to corrode, because otherwise what can happen is you get that green corrosion internally through the wire harness, and that just makes a nightmare for you. You know, when this boat's another 10 years down the road or something and somebody else goes to do it, then it's all the wiring is shot. And now you're totally redoing it. And that's a bummer for the customer as well. And it's just not a good deal. So the other thing I do like about this little butane torch is that flame is really hot, but it doesn't make a lot of heat. So in other words, the flame is hot, but you can be, you know, you can't see that, can you? you can be here and not be getting burnt. So you can be in proximity to things and not, not damage them. Of course, you still gotta be very careful, but. So there we go. Them are all shrunk down appropriately. And we are ready to go ahead and install the new head unit back into the hole. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so again, here's our new head unit installed in the original case. And we're gonna go ahead and just plug these guys back into here. So. Um, looks like the bottom one is for our power source. So clip that in there, making sure it's in there well. And then the top one is for our speakers. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. This one's a little tougher here. You don't want to force it. You want to make sure it goes nice and straight. There we go. So there we go. So them are plugged in nice. We've got all our wiring. Now we'll install it. And inside here, we'll go ahead and clean all this wiring up real nice. But we're putting this guy back in its spot, right there, making sure our holes line up, and we'll put our screws back in. Not getting too crazy, we don't want to crack anything. I like to do one on each side to make sure it's leveled back out.
All right, now we'll go up underneath and see what we need to do about getting it supported. All right, so the only other wire we need to hook up is our antenna wire, and that guy plugs right into here, so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll need to tie all these wires up, but we need to get the support bracket. Now you can see that's a very long way away, and also it doesn't appear that this came with a stud. It came with a hole, but it didn't come with the stud. So we're gonna have to either get a bolt or, or C, but although this is installed well, it still has some play and you don't want that banging across, doing that going across the lake. We gotta get this screwed in there nice. So let's go ahead and find a, uh, a bolt to put in there or a stud. All right, so unfortunately I couldn't get it on camera, but the stud from the old radio is actually the proper one. So we went ahead and repurposed that. And we had to move this ahead slightly, but now this radio is in there nice and solid. So the only next thing to do down here is to tie up all these wires. But before we go ahead and do that, we're going to go ahead and power this radio back on, and or this new radio on, I should say, and make sure everything works. Just in the event it doesn't, we don't have to um, undo all of our nice wire ties. So let's go make sure this radio does its job. All right, so he's got it ran to this master power. We've got that guy on. And as you can see, our radio is working as it should. Um, unfortunately, we can't, I can't uh, play any music for you because, well, copyright, but you can see it's working nicely. So yeah, that, the only thing left to do is go up underneath and, and tie up them wires. All right, guys, so we are done. Quick and simple, that's how you uh, install a new radio in your boat. No matter what boat you have or you're looking at, um, this, this, these steps are gonna be relatively similar. There might be slight variations, but for the most part, this will get you where you need to go. So um, in the, one of the last how-to videos I did of installing a battery shutoff switch in my fish house, a subscriber asked that I would go over and show the completed job, which I guess is kind of obvious. I just didn't think of it. So thank you to you. For him, to him, I should say, for uh, mentioning that, I'll definitely be doing that. So here's the, the faceplate install. So we've got our pieces reinstalled. Everything's nice and, and flush. Our door opens and closes as it should. Slides back. Of course, now it's gonna be difficult because I'm doing it with the wrong hand. There we go. So that slides out of the way. Here's what the radio looks like all installed. I'll go over and clean this up a little bit, but um, that's what that looks like. And we'll... Uh, We'll flip you around, take you underneath, and show you what the wiring job looks like all said and done. All right, so here's the wiring again. Went through. Here's our antenna wire. We got that plugged in. Our support strap is solid. Um, went and tied the wiring up here really nice. Um, tucked that guy up in there. You can still get at the fuse holder. And then I reused the hole that was here for the, originally for the mounting strap and used a zip tie with a hole in it to mount the wiring up. Real nice, so everything looks real clean and shouldn't get, you know, tangled in feet or anything he might store under here. So there you go, guys. Again, I hope you find that helpful. If you do, uh, please hit that subscribe button, like, and drop me a comment on uh, maybe what you've installed the radio on or maybe some crazy things you've seen while installing electronics in a boat. This boat is newer and very nice. Sometimes things are pretty, pretty hacked apart and you kind of got to start over. So, um, but until next time, you guys have a good one.